Thank you very much, Pierre. Good morning, everyone. Um, we at Macro Advisory Partners work with large macro investors and corporates and governments on helping them understand the intersection of three key factors, policy, politics, and markets uh, in investing in new markets. And it's about an intersection that really matters more now than probably ever. Uh, given the scale of the macro shifts going on in the global economy, given how much policy has been a determinant of economic growth, particularly in the last five years since the financial crisis, both in the developed world and certainly in the developing world as well. And as we talk to clients and we work with clients on the investment climate in Africa, there are really three points that we, and uh, themes that we really emphasize. One is really how you shift the basis of an investment in Africa and how Africa is able to achieve this from a political judgment to an economic judgment. And that has to do with conflict questions, it has to do with governance questions. The second key theme is about seeing Africa very much more as 54 distinct countries rather than one, but in lots of ways for Africa to see it as one country rather than 54 distinct ones. And that's a duality that's important on both sides, and I'll say two more minutes about that. The third piece, and this is Michael very much really talking, I think, in a very fascinating way about the two drivers here, technology and the private sector, together with government really transforming the economic base. And that is about a new relationship between the private sector and the state uh, in a lot of these places, and I'll say a bit about that. The first thing really is about governance. I mean, if you look at the last 25 years of Africa's development, certainly relative to India and elsewhere, it has been conflict, and all of you know this uh, very well, that has set back progress. What we are seeing um, is both in terms of conflicts a much, much better robust management and fundamentally a different set of um, incentives and motivations on the parts of leaders. Um, I'll tell you, two, three, year, three years ago now at a dinner of African CEOs in London, I was seated next to a president of a uh, West African country, uh, oil rich, not known exactly for its governance, uh, but it was uh, President Kagame who was speaking. And there was broad applause in the room and when the applause ended, this president turned to me and he said, in five years, I'm going to come back to this room and all of you are going to applaud me the way you applaud him. Now, that's a statement of intent. It's a state of, amb of ambition. Uh, we'll see how much progress can be made. But it's about how increasingly a, a number of important elites and government entities in Africa wish to be judged as successful. And that is about demonstrating leadership and governance, creating the right kind of environment for transparent uh, investment, and that is a very important uh, driver of this. Fundamentally, for a lot of markets, Western markets, it is a very paradoxical thing that they're willing to fund and accept technical risk. If you look at whether it's in infrastructure or technology companies, telecom companies, certainly in the energy space, much more than they're willing to uh, understand and navigate and quantify political risk. And so one of the challenges here is to continue what has been a challenge for, for Africa, which has been the political risk perception, but actually the management of that through better governance, I think, has been a very significant driver of the growth of the last few years. So this shift from the basis of investment, from political risk and political understanding to investment, is only really possible uh, through the kind of governance improvements that we're seeing, and that has certainly been uh, affected also very much by how multilateral institutions have engaged. The second point I wanted to make is about this notion of, uh, we know certainly the lack of infrastructure, the lack of inter-regional connectedness, East Africa, West Africa, is a huge hindrance. If you think about the fact that 80% of US GDP is domestically generated and only 10% of African GDP is, domesticated, is generated from within the continent, this is a huge, huge gap that needs to be bridged. Obviously, the African Development Bank and President Kabaruka has been hugely focused on this. What is also important, however, is for outside investors to see a number of these African countries as much more distinct than they do now. Uh, and that is not because you don't want a steady development for everyone, but it's the reality that in every geography, uh, that some markets are ahead, some markets are improved in governance, and actually the leaders can help drive progress in other countries. So both being able to see Africa from an infrastructure perspective, from an investment perspective, as more whole, but at the same time also appreciating the differences is going to be uh, very, very important and is important to, to investors. The third and last point I'll make in this opening session uh, segment here is this new relationship between the private sector and the state. 
I think it's very, there's been a huge amount of caricature in the West about the nature of Chinese investment in Africa. Uh, I think it is often much more constructive. Uh, I think a lot of the criticism from the West is frankly fairly biased because it's a competitive situation that they'd rather not see. Uh, and third, it's about, I think, understanding that for a lot of states around the world, not just in Africa, getting a different relationship between the private sector and the state is going to be hugely important. It's not about state capitalism on the Chinese model, but it's certainly also not about the very liberal model that we see in certainly some Western countries and don't seem to be delivering all that well. There, I would say again, it's about a much better interaction between the private sector and the state. It's not about state capitalism per se, but it's about a capitalist state. A lot of these countries need more state, a smarter state, a better set of institutions and predictability, and that is very much something that the private sector can help encourage. Michael talked about this in his business, and we see it in other businesses as well. So the caricature of wanting less state involvement, less of a state um, uh, role in the economy is actually important to be clarified. It's a smarter, better state that's needed often. And by the way, that goes for India as well and a number of other emerging markets. And that understanding for the private sector and the state to work better together uh, is going to be a huge impact. So the investment climate, broadly speaking, in Africa, yes, there's much more of a sense of opportunity. The fundamental structural drivers, demography, uh, energy, and, and, and the like are there. But it is the governance question that needs to be continually put front and center for Africa's growth to continue. Thank you. Thank you, Nader. Doing business in Africa. You can't afford to be without Africa Investor.